Since the launch of both Blackmagic RAW and ProRes RAW, I always wondered which one is better. And now, with my S1H capable of recording to both formats externally, I finally had the chance to use the same sensor to conduct a fair comparison. Blackmagic RAW coming to mirrorless cameras was great news to advanced filmmakers using DaVinci Resolve. And I know everyone is waiting for it to roll out to all other mirrorless cameras that are capable of ProRes RAW recording. But before getting too excited, you should ask yourself, does this version of Blackmagic RAW offer you the same performance you get from traditional Blackmagic RAW recorded on the pocket camera range? Also, how well does it perform against ProRes RAW? In this episode, I'll give you my honest and unbiased answers to all these questions. I'll share some good news and unfortunately some bad news along with a major discovery I stumbled upon while testing it out. I'll cover important topics like white balance control, noise and a lot more, all to give you an idea on which one brings the best out of this camera. I assume you already know this episode is very technical, so it's not for everyone. If you're still up for it, grab your drink, clear your mind and get ready for another tech review. Before I start, I invite you to check this two-part episode talking about the S1e RAW output. Also this other two-part episode that offers more recent information about how ProRes RAW works on the A7S III. Those episodes have all the valuable information you need to understand how RAW works in general. They will also answer and explain many points I'll be mentioning here. I'll leave the links down below. Also to avoid repetition, Gerald Undone did a great job covering many aspects of Blackmagic RAW, so I decided to skip those here. Again, links below. So let's start with the basics of what you need to record Blackmagic RAW from the S1H. First, update your S1H with firmware 2.4, then attach a Blackmagic Video Assist 12G HDR monitor recorder. You can choose between the 5 inch and the 7 inch, connected with a reliable and high speed HDMI that can handle the RAW's high data rates coming from the camera. Many filmmakers ignore this detail and end up with cables that keep on cutting off after a couple of seconds, so I'll leave my recommendation in the links below. Of course, enable the RAW output from the camera menu and you're done. This setup will get you 5.9K resolution maxing out at 30p. Unfortunately, this is the only full frame format that can record in RAW. Then 4K maxing out at 60p, along with anamorphic maxing out at 50p only in PAL or 30p in NTSC. All those are in Super 35 crop mode. And everything here comes in 12-bit, which is a very good upgrade from the typical 10-bit you get from internal recording or external ProRes 4-2 recording. Side note, please don't believe any camera that claim to be recording or outputting 16-bit. That's nothing but a marketing stunt. There's nothing out there that can record 16-bit and you don't even need it. It's a topic I already covered in previous episodes, I'll leave a link down below. So the important question now, is this S1H version of Blackmagic RAW the same as the one that you get from the Blackmagic Pocket range? The answer is no, not exactly. Let's jump to Resolve to check how I got to this conclusion. In the RAW camera menu, DaVinci automatically detects the camera and sets its corresponding color space and gamma curve to V-gamut and V-log. Technically speaking, they're optimized to squeeze the best results out of the sensor, so it's advisable to keep them as is. But there's nothing stopping you from choosing different combinations of color spaces and gamma curves. You'll be playing in the creative territory and get different results that might actually please you. So feel free to have fun with it. While you do, you'll realize that your gamma curve controls are inactive. To get them back, you'll need to set your gamma to black magic. But you can get the same results from the standard gamma tools such as curves. Second, you'll notice ISO control is inactive. But again, you can get the same results with the exposure slider. They're pretty much the same thing, only different names. Third, you also lose highlight recovery checkbox, which is designed to squeeze out and recover some details in the highlight areas that usually gets tossed when you apply the standard decoding matrix. But having it dimmed just like the ISO control, rather than be completely absent, gives me hope that this can possibly be activated with an update. Let's wait and see. And finally, the apply lot checkbox is missing here, which you can find when you go back to the clips from the pocket camera. It's not that important, honestly. What it does is apply the monitoring lot you used when shooting this clip, which again, you can manually do yourself. So it's more of a convenience option. This one might not make an appearance with an update. I won't miss it in all cases. Now, I'm sure you were all keeping your eyes on the color temperature slider here with the million dollar question. Can I get metadata based white balance control? We all know it's one of the main advantages we love about shooting RAW. So the answer is yes and no. Let me explain. To show you a reference of how I'm expecting it to work, I shot two reference clips in Blackmagic RAW with the Pocket 6K. One at the correct white balance of 6200, the other at 2500, intentionally throwing it all the way off. So the beauty of Blackmagic RAW and RAW formats in general is with the least amount of effort in the color temperature slider, 
I can dial in the white balance I want and perfectly match both clips, so you don't really need to worry about setting the correct white balance on set anymore. Now let's test the S1H with the video assist combo with a basic Rec. 709 LUT, shooting another clip at the correct white balance of 5500 Kelvin and another at 2500 which is obviously pretty off. But unfortunately when using the same slider to bring it to 5500, results didn't match. The image looks more yellowish orange, which is clear here on the vector scope when I toggle between both. The good news is that it took me a couple of minutes of color correction to get a close enough match. You can see a subtle difference here when I toggle between them, but with some more tweaking you'll probably reach 100%. So here's the process once more for your reference. The correct white balance of 5500 next to the wrong one of 2500. Here's when I just use the color temperature slider to match it to 5500, giving me the wrong yellowish orange results. Then finally when I applied some manual color corrections to get a close enough match. So it seems the raw color informations are there, but I guess it's not properly transformed or interpreted by Resolve and it needs some tweaking. But that's not the point. The point is, white balance control is the first major difference between Blackmagic RAW from the S1H and from the pocket range. This behavior is similar to what you get from internal recording by the way. Once again, I shot the same composition internally in H.265, one at the correct white balance of 5500 Kelvin and the other at 2500. Of course we don't have access to the camera raw menu with the metadata based white balance control, but instead we get color temperature control in the color wheels tab, which is more of a color effect than a color control. As I try to match it, you can see it's hard to find a close enough value. So I'll settle on this one, it's a close enough starting point, but a much worse starting point compared to what we saw from the same process in Blackmagic RAW. Side by side, here are both formats with their corresponding white balance adjusted versions. You can see how internal recording is way off, with a blue tint all over it. It's a cool fashion look, but scores very bad when it comes to accuracy. I tried to correct the internal version, but it took me 10 times the amount of time to barely get a close enough match, which still needs some secondary corrections. So in this case, it's better to shoot in Blackmagic RAW. But you know what's better than Blackmagic RAW in this case? ProRes RAW. So I repeated the whole thing once again, Two clips, correct white balance at 5500, wrong at 2500, went to the temperature slider in the 2500, punched in 5500, and perfect match. Simple, clean, no time wasted, and no grading skills needed. But the major drawback in ProRes RAW is the fact that Final Cut itself is a very primitive grading app compared to Resolve. So my advice, if you're looking for a more advanced coloring workflow, you can adjust the white balance here in Final Cut, then export it to ProRes 444 to grade in Resolve. Or just use Blackmagic RAW and do all this in Resolve if you're not doing any drastic color white balance shifts like I did here. So bottom line, metadata based white balance control does exist in Blackmagic RAW recorded from the S1H. But no, it does not behave like the standard Blackmagic RAW coming out of the pocket range. Not yet at least. On the other hand, ProRes RAW is ahead in this game and is meeting those RAW standards we're expecting from RAW formats. So my theory is, Panasonic is probably aware of this issue. They usually hold themselves to high standards and won't let such issues linger. Remember when ProRes RAW from the S1H first launched in 2020 without having any white balance control in Final Cut, then shortly after it was enabled. So I feel it's a similar story here, except that Resolve apparently enabled an early and unfinished version of this white balance control. So let's hope I'm right and it's just a matter of waiting for future updates. Let's now explore noise and details. That's where I think I landed on a major and unfortunate discovery I wasn't aware of. Something that not only involves Blackmagic RAW from the S1H, but Blackmagic RAW in general, even the ones recorded from their own cameras. So I took test shots without using any LUTs to prevent them from concealing any noise especially in the crushed shadows. I shot two clips, one at the native 640 ISO and the other at 3200, basically to get both clean and noisy profiles. I shot at 5.9K in Blackmagic RAW, ProRes RAW and internal H.265. The reason for this is not only to see how much noise you get in each format, but also this difference in results will give you a hint of what's going on under the hood. And that's exactly what happened. Using Neat Video Denoiser, I measured the noise levels here, then did the same on all clips, then took this data to this chart. You probably fell in the trap of thinking the winner is the format that expresses less noise, while in the case of RAW, it's quite the opposite. Simply because internal recording allows the camera to apply a denoising pass to clean up the high amount of noise usually found in RAW images. In case you didn't know, RAW is usually noisy. And that's absolutely normal. So it was expected to see how Blackmagic RAW expressed more noise than internal, but it was pretty unexpected to express significantly less noise than ProRes RAW. 
This should not be happening. Raw images coming from the same sensor should perfectly match across all raw formats with a potential of probably less than 1% imperceivable difference caused by the compression algorithms between ProRes RAW and Blackmagic RAW. But I made sure to record everything in the highest quality possible on both to prevent such huge difference. So Blackmagic RAW having almost half the amount of noise we have in ProRes RAW just didn't look right. So after extensive tests and close inspections, I concluded that ProRes RAW is once again the better format of all three. Not only because it proudly expressed the most amount of noise, but it's the shape of the noise that look more raw than in Blackmagic RAW. I know this might sound counterintuitive. Comparing the three formats, seeing the way noise looks in ProRes RAW means it's not applying any denoising, offering the highest fidelity and most honest translation of what the sensor really captured, giving us a literal meaning of a raw image, not a processed version of it, like what I discovered happening in Blackmagic RAW, which is not as raw as I expected it to be, but still pretty good overall, not a total disappointment. If you want to know how I reached to that conclusion and learn about the best format to get the cleanest image, then I'm warning you, this next chapter will get very technical. So feel free to skip it since you already know my verdict. Okay, if you're still here, try to watch this at 4K because we're going pixel peeping at a quantum level. So let's check internal H.265 first. Zooming all the way in, what you're seeing here is the result of the camera's internal denoiser. The image is relatively clean, with subtle monochromatic noise, but a bit soft with some loss of details. To get a better view of what's going on, let's check the blue channel. It's like an x-ray that uncovers all noise and compression artifacts that you can't see in normal RGB mode. And as expected, you can see a ton of macro blocking all over the place. And noise is just a bunch of smudged blocks. But as scary as this looks, there's nothing unexpected here. That's what a typical compressed format looks like under the microscope. Now let's check Blackmagic RAW. It's clear it suffers more from chromatic noise. That's because it's not subject to any internal denoising like in the H.265. And you can see a bit more details here when you toggle between both. But to me, that looks more like a result of some sharpening effect rather than actual details, which you can notice from the subtle darker outlines around the edges. Hold that thought for a minute till we check ProRes RAW. Now just for fun, let's apply some denoising to Blackmagic RAW and compare it to the H.265, which is already denoised by the camera, remember? As you can see, Blackmagic RAW looks a lot better than H.265. That's why I always advise, it's better to have the flexibility of denoising your footage in post instead of letting the camera do this very bad job and sacrifice all those details in the process. And if you try to denoise the H.265, it reconfirms what I just said. Many details are already lost. When we check some blue channel x-rays without the denoise, you don't have macro blocking anymore like we saw in the H.265. But what's also expected, is at this high magnification, you should be able to see noise pixelation. Not this kind of mushiness and softness typically found in compressed formats. It's like a raw H.265 hybrid. Let's check ProRes RAW to understand what I mean. You can already see how it's more noisy, but the noise has a different quality to it. It has much finer grain, less mushy, maybe we can say less processed. If I toggle between both, you can see the image looks crisper, like it has more details. Let's check the blue channel. And that's the most revealing. This is the kind of raw noise pixelation I was talking about. When compared to Blackmagic RAW, you can see how that looks too processed and mushy next to ProRes RAW. So to summarize this discovery I was talking about, it seems that the recorder applies some sort of denoising and sharpening to the footage before it encodes it to Blackmagic RAW, which kind of defies the purpose of shooting RAW. But in case you don't know, Blackmagic RAW is partially debayered, and that could be the reason behind all this. If you want to understand what that means, I have another technical warning for you. So my theory is, we know that ProRes RAW is a true RAW format, where the untouched RAW data coming out of the camera is encoded into a ProRes RAW container in the Ninja 5 recorder. Then when you take that file to your computer, the file gets debayered to turn into an image. And because it's a RAW image, the computer lets you control the log curve and the color temperature, amongst other things. The same kind of settings that the camera bakes into the clip in compressed formats. But when it comes to Blackmagic RAW, using the video assist recorder, the raw data from the sensor is also sent to it. But unlike ProRes RAW, instead of getting packaged immediately in a raw file container to get debayered on the computer, it goes under partial debayering right here in the recorder first, which could include this denoising and sharpening that we saw and maybe some other things we haven't noticed yet. And all this is blended in a half-baked image that still needs more debayering. Then finally wrapped into a Blackmagic RAW file, and when imported into DaVinci, it gets a second level of debayering to deliver the image. 
but magically still holds enough raw data to give you the control over log curve and white balance, while the white balance, as we saw, is still not behaving accurately at the moment. So bottom line, despite of acting like raw, it is not a true raw format. It's a hybrid format that went under some processing that changed some of its raw attributes and left others. And to my other surprise, the same softness we saw here was also present in clips shot with the pocket camera as well. So it is an issue with Blackmagic RAW in general, not just with the external recording from other cameras. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But after all, I don't really care about what you call it or what it is, whether it's RAW or not. As a DP, I only care about the results, and the results we're getting are not that dramatic, but surely worth noting before choosing to record on Blackmagic RAW. To wrap up and put everything in perspective, when we compare both RAW formats from the S1H, white balance in Blackmagic RAW is not acting as expected, something that could change in the future, while ProRes RAW is pretty accurate. When it comes to RAW fidelity, meaning having a true RAW file that didn't undergo any denoising, sharpening, or any destructive or irreversible process, ProRes RAW wins again, and I don't think this will ever change in Blackmagic RAW. Those two things could already be deal breakers for many of us, at present, I would personally choose ProRes RAW over Blackmagic RAW with no second thoughts, even though the whole setup you get from Blackmagic RAW and the Video Assist will give you a lot more advantages over ProRes RAW setup with the Ninja 5, like how DaVinci is a much more powerful grading app, how you get a 5-inch and a 7-inch recorder options, which have so many advantages over the Ninja 5 already, but for a marginal higher price. So all that makes me look forward to the day when Panasonic and Blackmagic hopefully fix this white balance issue, and when that happens, Blackmagic Raw could make a lot more sense.